This okay. conference will now be recorded. <clears throat> uh, good, good evening, everyone. This is the inaugural meeting of the Town of Monos Diversity, Equity and Inclusivity uh, Committee. Um, we are meeting here tonight. We are recording the, this meeting. It is not being broadcast live, but it will be uploaded to the town's website um, at some time following the meeting. Um, as the uh, CAO of the town, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, I'll, I'll leave the disclosure of pecuniary interest so we have an opportunity to get through that. And uh, we have a brief agenda uh, tonight, uh, including introductions of both uh, town members and uh, volunteer committee members. Uh, we'll be looking at an election of a chairperson and we'll be reviewing the committee terms of reference and also questions regarding the roles and responsibilities of members. So, um, and, and any other business that uh, the committee wishes to get to in this uh, inaugural meeting. And first of all, I'd like, uh, given that this is the Diversity and Equity Inclusivity Committee, I would like to uh, begin with, with our um, Indigenous acknowledgement, uh, normally reserved for our council meetings, but I think it was appropriate for tonight's meeting as well. So. Uh, we would like to begin by respectfully acknowledging that the town of Mona resides within the traditional territory and ancestral lands of the Tio Antati, Atawandaran, Haudenosaunee, and Ashanaabe peoples. We also acknowledge that the town of Mona resides within the treaty lands named under Treaty 18, the Nautawasaga Purchase of 1818. These traditional territories upon which we live and learn are steeped in rich Indigenous history and traditions. It is with this statement that we declare to honor and respect the past and present connection of indigenous peoples with this land, its waterways and resources. And if I could just, uh, just at the start, as the CEO of the town, welcome all of you to the committee. Um, it's great when we um, see such uh, uh, interest in our committees from residents of the town and uh, I look forward to working uh, with this committee. Um, any questions you have when you're not active during the committee and you wish to uh, speak to someone at Town Hall, please uh, give me a call and I'll make sure my information is available to you. So at that, I will introduce uh, Mayor John Creelman and Councillor Mankdalo, who are your council members, uh, and uh, they can make a brief introduction um, uh, of themselves and uh, what they see this committee accomplishing. Uh, Mayor Creelman. Th thank you, Mark, and uh, welcome everyone. Uh, we're so gratified that you've been willing to step forward and volunteer for this uh, uh, this assignment, this work, uh, membership on this committee. Um, we are in a learning curve here in terms of what we want to uh, address, what we want to accomplish. Um, I, uh, I think that this is an important uh, part of our evolution as a town, uh, that we um, uh, step up and address these issues. Uh, we have a lot of, of work to do, a lot of acknowledgement to make that uh, uh, there is a diversity out there that sometimes is uh, not uh, acknowledged, uh, not recognized, and uh, there are ways of doing that in a respectful and appropriate fashion. I uh, again welcome you. Uh, we're all learning something tonight, and I think every meeting that we have, we will continue to uh, learn things from each other and about the uh, mission that we've uh, established for the town. Uh, Councillor Magdalo. You're muted, muted Ralph. Ralph. <laughs> Thank you. I wonder, John, as this is the first meeting and we don't, people don't know each other uh, in, in many, in such a, in many instances, if it'd be worthwhile for you to just tell people a little bit about who you are and within the context of the, the town, et cetera. And uh, maybe we'll all do that as we go through and introduce ourselves. Sure. Who would like to go first? Well, you're, you're, you're still, you're still on the stage. <laughs> Well, um, I'm John Creelman. 
I uh, entered elective life in, in uh, 1991 and uh, served on uh, municipal council from 1991 to 2003. Uh, I was a councillor. I was a deputy at that time, a deputy reeve. Uh, I was uh, a reeve, uh, then a mayor for six years. Uh, I took a 15-year hiatus as a justice of the peace. Uh, decided to retire from that, and uh, now I'm back here again, uh, deja vu all over again. Um, this is an area that uh, is of interest to me because when I was a Justice of the Peace, we had uh, an enormous amount of training uh, with regard to how we ran our courts, uh, how we should be mindful of the people who appeared uh, in those courts, um, I'm not saying that my training is perfect or it is complete. I still have a lot to learn. And uh, I'm proud of the fact that Mono has decided to pick up this initiative and run with it. So that's a little bit about my record. I guess I'm Anyone next. would like to chime in? Yeah. Um, so. A little bit of a, a background. Um, I bought property here in Mono in, in 1983, um, and, and it was a part-time uh, residence. And then I moved here full-time in 2008. And um, seven years ago, I, I ran for council and was successful to everybody's surprise. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I really enjoyed this. It's been a good chance to uh, do some things that I think are useful. and. Um, uh, to meet a lot of very interesting people and to work with other interesting people, and uh, particularly on the town, we've got a wonderful staff. And you, as, if you don't know your staff, uh, you, you want to take advantage of, of the opportunity because uh, we are very fortunate here. Um, I, I, I live on a farm, and I never was a farmer uh, in my previous life. Life, I was a, a physician, and I've given that up now. Um, but I have a hundred-acre farm down in South Mono, and initially we raised. Um, uh, sheep and now we've got cattle here and i live here uh, by myself with uh, two australian cattle dogs and one maine coon cat <laughs> I, i'm very interested in this this subject uh, because working as a, a doctor in uh, downtown toronto uh, is a, toronto is a very diverse community and so that i had a lot of exposure to people of all different <laughs> backgrounds i'm not sure that i could say as much to the LGBTQ plus um, But I, I, re I realized uh, that in my own life, I'm a what you call a, a privileged white uh, professional. And that puts me in a position that um, many people in marginalized uh, uh, groups are, are, do not have the, the privileges that just came to me. And, and I didn't really realize this until I went through life a little bit. And, realize that I have my biases and I have my prejudices and that these are things that are really harmful to other people. So I was very interested in this subject. In fact, I introduced it as a motion to council back in December that we would have this committee that you're now on and that we would pursue a program uh, to uh, uh, look at the issues of uh, diversity and inclusion here. So I'm, I'm delighted that everybody has, has joined the committee, as John said he was, and uh, I think uh, it's an opportunity for us to do some good things. Thanks, Roth. Um, before we go to committee, committee members, I should probably uh, let people know who I am too. Uh, so I, uh, my name is Mark Riley. I'm the Chief Administrative Officer for the town. I've been with the town since 1990, just a year before John got elected for the first time. Um, so, and I, uh, I was originally started as the director of planning. I've served as uh, director of planning. I've served as uh, clerk, deputy clerk. Uh, I have filled in for two road superintendents in their absence following uh, uh, um, uh, passing away, unfortunately. Uh, I've also served on conservation authorities as members in a pinch. So I have a, quite a range of experience with the town. Um, been here 32 years and uh, uh, expect to be a lifelong employee. Um, not sure when that ends though. Uh, <laughs> as far as uh, diversity goes, uh, the um, my, my first involvement really with, with diversity and inclusivity actually came through lacrosse. 
um, I, I've been very involved with lacrosse and obviously it's a, it's a, um, you know, a sport um, basically originating through the First Nations. And uh, with, within that, uh, uh, within Ontario, there's been a very active acknowledgement of the First Nations and and the the need for respect um, of First Nations, and that is uh, something that gets ingrained, I think, through a lot of lacrosse uh, players and of and people involved in the sport because um, it has been active for probably 20 years in in terms of approaching um, the acknowledgement of 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 the Indigenous people and and the fact that. Uh, you know, when, when they come to the arena, they're, they're, they're coming from a different background than, than most of the other um, community <clears throat> teams that are coming in. And it was quite an eye opener to be uh, trained in that regard, both as a coach and a, as a player and, and the need for uh, a, a acknowledgement of, of, a, of um, a different background that people are coming to uh, even within the sport. And so I, I look forward to uh, working with all of you to uh see your all to um see all of your individual backgrounds so um if i could just go around and we'll 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 get all the committee members kind of do a quick uh two three minute introduction too so that you can all get aware of uh uh who who each of you are on the committee so i'm going to start with the first person on the call so that would be andrew so hey yeah there you Hello, go folks. yeah surprise okay. to be in first in Okay. Yeah. My name's Andrew. Um, I uh, signed up for this. I guess, uh, uh, what can I say? Um, I guess I'm non-binary. I'm a trans person. I was a drag queen. I, I do that once in a while. I, I, I've done it for the Human Library in Orangeville. Um, I, there, there's a, a show on uh, me by the library in Orangeville. Uh, you can Google it called Andylicious. And I think I spelt licious wrong, but Andy licious. Uh, I've uh, done a lot of drag queen shows in my life. Um, so that sort of uh, lends to the LGBT2 community. Um, the Celebrate Your Awesomeness will be coming up. And I've got another uh, um, appointment to be in the Human Library. I think it's in June 18th. Um, <clears throat> I'm also from a refugee family. Um, I'm half Arabic and half British. Uh, my parents were, my dad was a refugee. Um, and so there was a lot of, uh, growing up, there was racism in Orangeville, but there was also a lot of really nice, great people in Orangeville, but there were certain names thrown around. Uh, so I'm sensitive to racial issues. Um, what else? Uh, I, 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 I'm with the United Church. Uh, I really like the United Church. They are one of the only churches in Orangeville that uh, um, has uh, same-sex marriages. So I'm in tune with that. Um, <clears throat> I'm also a member of AA and NA uh, for the last 32 years. So I work with a lot of people that have substance abuse issues and I try to carry a message that there's a better way of living life. Uh, and I, I do that almost every day. I'm on Zoom meetings. I have different meetings every day uh, on Zoom for AA and NA. If you know what those are, I, I think everybody knows what that is. Um, I've done a lot of things in my life. I was a movie projectionist most of my life uh, in Toronto with Cineplex, and I've worked for some big movie stars like Elizabeth Taylor and Carol Burnett and Catherine O'Hara. And um, uh, my brother-in-law was uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat. My sister lived with him for three years, and he's a very famous artist. His painting, he's dead now, but his paintings sell for $100 million a piece. So I'm known for that. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm known for a lot of different things, and you can ask me any questions, uh, like a, a, as in a book, you could read me. Um, I've got some ideas to bring to the table. I think my three minutes is up. Uh, I'm going to stop there and let somebody else continue. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Omnia. Hi, my name is Amina Abdin, uh, well known as Omnia. They make a mistake back uh, home uh, with my name, so it's end up with a different name. 
Uh, but everybody knows know, uh, knows me as Omnia. I'm from Syria. I emigrated here uh, 15 years ago. Uh, I lived in, uh, in Toronto for uh, four years, and then we moved here because we like we we like to live uh, a quiet uh, life uh, away from uh, crowded area. I am a mother of uh, four children. Uh, 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 I. Uh, 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 sorry, I was uh, studying biology back home and then I start English uh, in Toronto and then I stopped when I came to Mono. But now I'm looking for upgrading myself. I already registered in more uh, English uh, classes and uh, this company will give me a lot of experience. I'm so happy to serve this uh, uh, community and uh, uh, help with ideas uh, no matter what uh, to uh, for everybody to live peacefully, fairly, and uh, equally. Thanks, Amina. Okay. Uh, Christine. Hi, everybody. My name is Christine Walker. Uh, I've only been living in Mono now for one year, uh, and I hope I die here. I hope I never leave. Um, I come from uh, Toronto area and I actually work downtown Toronto. I am currently the, actually my background is hospitality and culinary. I'm actually a qualified chef, but about 18 years ago, I went into teaching and um, then became the chair and the director of the division. And I've recently moved over to the director of global partnerships at George Brown College. So uh, I've been at the college for about 18 years. Um, I've had a lot of experience with uh, uh, building equity, diversity, and inclusion committees. Um, George Brown's very strong committees uh, and uh, policies and procedures that, and you know, making sure that it's incorporated into our curriculum and day-to-day -day activities and conversations. I um, have spent a lot of time traveling, spent a lot of time in India and China and Thailand and Korea and Italy and all those other places as well. So I. I have, I, I, you know, the, the being white, I for sure have learned a lot about my own biases and I was a board member on um, food share for uh, three years because I wanted to understand um, all the issues around food and, um, and, and lack of access to food and food deserts in Toronto and the marginalized communities that don't have access to food. So I wanted to learn a lot about that. So I spent a fair bit of time there. And, um, you know, within the first week here in Mono, I discovered we do have racism here. And uh, so we have some teaching to do and some, some, you know, some persuasive education, I think, over the next few years on some of our community members. And um, if I've learned anything is that uh, you can never tell somebody they're wrong when they have an opinion about race or racism or... Um, any of those areas that uh, you really need just gentle, constant persuasion, always out there, lots of communication, lots of uh, opportunities for people to learn. Um, and that this is not something that we will be able to um, change overnight or even in the next year. But I think that we have lots of opportunities and uh, this is a great place to be for sure. Great. Thank you, Christine. Hi, Nishan. Uh, Nishan's uh, just arrived. Nishan, we're just going through the committee members. They're just given a brief uh, two or three minute uh, uh, explanation of who they are, what they are, why they're here. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll continue on. I'll get to you in just a second. So, uh, John. You're muted, John. John, your microphone's muted. Oh, uh, yeah, my name is John Ito. Um, I guess my background is uh, Japanese. I was born here in Canada, out in the West Coast. So went through the uh, relocation, I guess, during the war. So uh, but I moved into, uh, when I retired, I moved into Mono in the year 2000. And uh, I guess I commuted into Etobicoke there for uh, uh, about two years before I fully retired. Um, I sort of graduated as a mechanical engineer and throughout my career in there, I worked uh, in Etobicoke and I had a, 
quite an extensive exposure to all the different nationalities of the people in the plant in there. Um, it was rather fascinating when you're working around problem solving around production equipment in there where you're dealing with the French, Scottish, German, Italian, you name it. It was a League of Nations problem solving. So it was a rather fascinating experience. Um, let's see what else we've got. <laughs> um, I guess the, the background, I guess my parents were uh, farmers. So uh, in uh, Brampton. So I had a background in farming, I guess. And uh, a lot of the hired uh, workers in there were mainly from uh, Italy and the Ukraine. Um, I guess uh, that's about it, I guess. Okay, thanks, John. Um, formerly Linda, uh, I'm gonna butcher your name, I'm sure. Is it Yo Yun? Yo-un. Sorry? Yo-yun. Hyo-un. So it's yo, yo okay. with an H in front of it, hyo. And yep. if you think about the French number one, un, un de toi, un, um, that's my second syllable, hyo-un. Um, so I, um, I, I was, used to be known as Linda. That's my Canadian or I guess was my Canadian name, uh, which I no longer go by as of last September. Um, uh, my, I'm Korean. Um, I was born in South Korea, Seoul, South Korea, and my family moved to Canada when I was three, uh, many, many years ago. And um, so my legal birth name is Hyun, but um, my parents, wanted to give me an English name when we moved to Canada because Hyoen, they found that Hyoen may be difficult for other people to pronounce. Um, but I was, um, I was just tired of accommodating other people and I uh, want to honor my parents and my, my Korean heritage. So have decided to drop my, um, Canadian name um, and embrace my Korean heritage and culture and um, just go by Hyun now. And uh, Hyoni is my nickname, so um, I, I go by both. Um, I also just started taking, um, early in January, I started taking Korean language classes to um, just be a better Korean speaker so I can um, Talk with my parents more fluently and uh, just learning, relearning my culture all over again. Um, I'm a, uh, I, the, the pandemic has gifted me with the opportunity to go back to school. So uh, I went back to school um, in 2020 at the start of the pandemic um, in um, environmental studies and sustainability at Royal Roads. And I'm also taking another program at University of Victoria for restoration of natural systems. And uh, so I'm very passionate about the environment um, and climate action um, and biodiversity. And, but I've also been taking quite a few indigenous uh, classes as well, which actually it really inspired me to um, dive a bit deeper into my, my heritage and my culture and revitalizing my, so my language. And um, so that's what really um, inspired me to change my name back to uh, my Korean name. Um, I also have a linguistics degree from McMaster from 20 years ago. Uh, so I've always been fascinated with different languages and cultures and um, um, I grew up in Oakville, uh, and my family was one of two Korean families uh, growing up. It was very much just a white suburban um, township when I grew up, and so there was not a lot of diversity and have experienced uh, quite a bit of prejudice and racism growing up, uh, as well as my parents. So um, I really have no tolerance for that. Um, and have just 
always been in very uh, monocultural um, environments and communities. So um, oh, the, with all the social issues that have really arose over the last few years, um, I'm I'm just so um, proud to see so many cultures and and genders and um, identities really standing loud and proud and uh, so uh, I was really happy to see that Mono is um, engaging with um, more diversity in, within the community and starting this committee so I would love to be a part of um, more cultural awareness and um, and celebrating people's differences and um, uh, cultural backgrounds and I hope I can bring something to the table and um, help to educate our community and bring more awareness to all the beauty there is within everyone. Perfect. Thanks, Ho Young. Um, Nishan, if you're still there. I am here. Um, so I've lived in Mono 12 years now. <clears throat> My family has been operating uh, businesses for the past 10 years here. Um, this is, I mean, I applied for this committee because this has been my home for quite a while. Um, I love this community. I love everybody in it. Um, we're fairly active in the community. I, uh, I've seen some downhill behavior over the past three years. Um, in 12 years, nine years of those 12 years, the first nine years never experienced any form of racism in this community. Um, the last three years, there's been several incidences in Orangeville and Mono and graffiti throughout our community and racial slurs. And uh, I just, uh, I really don't want to see our community go down that route and go downhill. Um, I want to work on educating people and improving um, I grew up in Caledon before it, I mean, it's still fairly a uh, white community, but I went to high school with a couple other Indian families. I, I was I experienced racism growing up, but then since I moved to this community, nothing until the pandemic started and this division that we see really for everything, gender, race, uh, or in, like everything, people are divided. Um, so I'm just here to try to stop this issue out before it becomes a permanent part of our community as well. <clears throat> Thanks very think much, Nishan. Sorry, go ahead. So I think that's it for me. It's, it's uh, I don't have a background in this kind of thing. I, I didn't. It's just I experienced it when I was young. And I've experienced it recently, and, and now I, I think it's time that I just am involved in doing something about it. Thank you. And I think that's, uh, I think there's very, you know, very few people on this committee that have been on committees before for the town. Um, so I think everybody's kind of coming from the same, uh, same perspective when it comes to sitting on a town committee. Um, so I, I, I don't let that worry you. Feel free to jump in and... Uh, uh, you know, we staff are here to help you out and support you as well as the counselors. So um, at this point in time, I would like to, uh, a daunting task, uh, I would like to move uh, forward and see whether we can uh, elect a chair person Sorry, for Michelle? this committee to uh, I... uh, take the meeting forward. I missed um, Michelle. I don't have any notes on Michelle. Oh, Mich yeah. M M Michelle is our recording secretary, but... Oh, uh, amazing. Michelle... <laughs> Michelle, if, I don't know if you want to. So Michelle is Michelle is relatively new um, to the office. She filled in uh, uh, on a maternity leave, actually, and we've we've found an opportunity to uh, find a place with her full time. She's very dynamic and uh, very helpful. Michelle, I don't know if you had anything to add to that. So. 
Uh, no, that was it. I was just going to say yeah, that I've taken on that new position in asset management and GIS at the town. Um, so, but in this committee, I'll mainly have an administrative role as a secretary, um, but I'm excited to hear everyone's um, experiences and ideas and recommendations for what the town can do. Perfect. Thanks, Michelle. Didn't, didn't mean to ignore you. I was trying to keep her in the background, so to speak. So um, anyways, um, so the uh, the task of electing a chair. So um, you, you've, you've, you've been able to listen to each other um, and I'll, 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 uh, I'll keep it open for you. What, what I'd like to, what I would suggest is if there's a, a mover uh, for a person to be chair, please put it for or a nomination for a chair, please put it forward if we can get a seconder and then we'll see whether there's any other nominations for a chair. So um, at this point in time, I'll call for nominations for a chair of the committee. I could add something here um, if anybody wants to, to know. Um, I'm, I'm uh, aware of Robert's Rules of Order and how to make motions and second motions and open the floor to discussion with a motion. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm used to Robert's Rules of Order in uh, uh, things uh, unfolding. And uh, also, uh, I was a Toastmaster. I was president of the Orangeville Toastmasters, which is a public speaking club. So um that might help uh in making a decision if you want a chairperson thanks well, yes, I, I mean i don't know if people are actually interested in being chair but i'd actually like to nominate i think you know um hyo Cho Juan, i think uh, un sorry un, um, would be a good uh chairperson i really liked your background and your introduction and your interest in as to why you're you're doing this so i'd like to nominate you if you're interested i'm honored thank you christine um i did forget to mention that i am currently the chair of the recreation advisory committee for the town of bono um so i wasn't sure if like you can be chair of more than one committee for the town so um I was hoping to kind of not be a chair for this committee. I just uh, didn't want to take on too much, um, especially uh, I, I, I sit on a few volunteer committees right now and I'm just not, I'm just not sure if I can take on um, a bigger role um, at this moment, but uh, thank you for thinking of me, Christine. <laughs> However, I would like to nominate um, Nishan. Um, I've met Nishan a, a, a few times at uh, at his business, uh, Garden 10 and 10, and he is a very um, lovely, personable person. Um, I, I know that you're very active on the Town of Mono um, community group on Facebook, and um, you have a very strong voice and um, I would second and, that for sure as well. Yeah, yeah. I was struggling between the two of you, which one I should uh, bring forward, but Nishan, I think uh, you'd be a great chair as well. I, um, I'm i hesitant only because I was actually hesitant to even take this position. position. I'm uh, pretty engaged outside of the country right now. I'm going to be leaving again next few weeks. Um, I, it's very difficult for me to take on anything like that. I would have normally loved to. Um, I was hesitant to even um, join this committee, to be honest, but it, it's something I really believe in and I want to be a part of, but I don't, I would prefer not to take on the position of chair only because I've, I mean, I've got a lot going on right now and I feel horrible saying that but it, it I, I don't think I'm up for it to be honest <clears throat> sorry guys that's really <laughs> nice though that really does mean a lot that two people thank you so much okay we have two declined uh, any other nominations for chair <laughs> well I'd like Thank to you. nominate uh, Christine then oh, 
And I would um, also, uh, Andrew, you have quite a, a interesting background and very diverse and, um, and uh, yeah, you've got, it sounds like you've got quite a bit of experience as well. So um, I would vote for Andrew as well. Thank you. Okay, so this will this will get interesting. So we have both Christine and Andrew been nominated. Um, it's going to be very difficult on a video um, chat room to do a vote. Um, don't know whether you've uh, run into this in the county, John. Just since there raised hands here, there's a react button. I think we could yep. use that. Um, I will just say I'm happy to be chair, but I don't feel my color of my skin is representative of what this committee is supposed to be about. And I I had the same conversation with food chair when they asked me to, to run as the chair. I, I will do, you know, I will serve you well and I will do whatever we need to to move our agendas forward. Um, but I do feel that when it's a equity, diversity, and inclusion committee, that maybe my face isn't the right one. So I just wanted to put it out there uh, because I, I do understand the biases on on people like me. So I just wanted to be clear on that. John, I really appreciate the nomination, though, for sure. I would step aside. I like Christine, so I, I let her uh, take over. <laughs> I, that settles that. <laughs> That that'll solve it. For Christine. <laughs> but and if at any time uh, you're busy or something, I could probably chair. I don't think uh, it would be that difficult to chair, but I I, I could be a backup for you. Okay, John, you, had, you have your hand Thanks, up. Andrew. John, I was going to say that there's not there's nothing that precludes co-chairs, and there's nothing that precludes uh, everyone having an opportunity over the course of a number of months of chairing mm -hmm. the committee. That's right, uh, yeah. I'd encourage that, frankly. Um, and, uh, you know, to those who think that this is an enormous amount of work and, and uh, uh, it's going to eat up a, a, a great amount of time, um, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how effortless it is. Um, I, I, I think we've had a really great group here and uh, we can all have a, a turn at, uh, at, at sharing. If everybody's interested, I don't I mind. Sorry. Sorry, Nishan. If, um, if you guys would still like, I don't mind trying. Um, if it's too much for me, I, I don't mind stepping down and letting somebody else give it a try. But I mean, if you guys are confident that it's it's uh, maybe I, I don't I, like I said I've never done this before, so I I could give it a shot. I'd be thrilled with that, Nishan, and I would definitely support you when you're not available and when you're out of the country. I would be happy to support you back, as I'm sure Andrew would as well. So um, that would be fine for me, absolutely. Okay. And Nishan, just speaking from experience, um, being the chair of the Recreation Committee, that's my first position as a chair, and it's really not too, it's not overwhelming at all. You just got to create an agenda and lead the meeting. <laughs> um, all right. It's really not a whole uh, extra lot of commitment outside of being a member. Okay. Okay, so, so Nishan, you're withdrawing your De decline and so we'll go back to the original mover and seconder which was uh yo Un and uh christine had seconded it so we'll, we'll put that as a motion on the floor to to have nishan chair the uh uh dei committee um and we'll just do a show of hands uh all in favor all opposed <laughs> We got one opposed. Okay, thank you. That I, I didn't oppose it. I, I was slow putting my hand up. I was not opposing it. If that's what you saw. <laughs> no, that's fine. No, and I was looking for where to put the hand up, like. Uh, uh, but okay, I'm for yeah, it. It's not. It's not. It's not like oh, it's over in the far left corner. So thanks, Andrew. 
Okay. Um, so Nishan, I'll uh, pass the meeting over to you if, if you're comfortable doing that. <laughs> um, trial by fire. Um, or, um, I mean, I can, I can always follow this through, uh, if, if you wish, and, uh, we can chat about it before the next meeting. I'll give you that option. Can you finish up today? I just got off a call. That's why I was late. So sure. I'm not horribly prepared yeah. right now. <laughs> okay. Um, well, the next item of business would be the, um, I guess the terms of reference for the committee, just so you're all aware. Um, I think they were all provided to you even prior to your interviews. Um, I don't know if uh, Councillor Mankdala or Mel Creelman want to want to go through, uh, I guess the ex expectations or the terms of reference, um, and then I will uh, kind of take you through the uh, rules of the Standing Advisory Committee, um, as opposed to taking on both Ralph or or John. Go ahead, John. Oh. I'm just going to defer to you, Ralph. <laughs> well, I, I, I'd like to simplify it. Uh, the terms of reference are a number of pages long. And um, I think we could simplify it in, in, in looking at what, what are we supposed to do and um, how does it work? So I'll take the latter. It works as an advisory committee. We are. Uh, we do not um, make this on our own, but we advise the council, this is what we'd like to do. And the, the job of this committee is to give the council advice. And because of the first background, I can expect that we're going to have a, uh, in, insights that uh, the council wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't have. So that's the beauty of the committee. I think you could divide the areas that we're going to work in into two. And one is with respect to the actual work of and activities of the town as an entity, and the rest is with respect to the community. So uh, we're, we'd like to put all the activities of the town, including our policies, uh, our programs, um, and activities, uh, look at them through a diversity, equity, and inclusivity lens and see if we're doing things in the best way we can. And so that's a, that's a, a process that could be Pretty easy, Nishan, for you to organize, I think, because um, you can look at, you can break down everything the town is doing, and then you can look at things one at a time. And then the community is a little more, um, for me, a little more difficult because I don't have a good handle on the, the community, but I think you people probably do uh, in terms of the marginalized groups, et cetera. And so our, our terms of reference are that we're to look at how the community deals with people of diverse backgrounds, whether it's the LGBTQ community or it's the uh, racialized groups, and to see if um, uh, it's being done the way it should be, uh, particularly if people are feeling included into the community or they're being put to one side a little bit by things that we may not know about. So that's how I look at the terms of references. First, there's the uh, not first, but there is the uh, uh, involvement of the uh, committee with what the, the way the town runs its things, and then there's the involvement of the the committee with how the uh, what's happening outside of the community. Also, a, a part a part of our part of our mandate is education. So um, how that work it works in uh, you, this committee can determine. As you know, we had George Cucci, who's an indigenous speaker at our town hall. It was uh, fairly well attended, and uh, he gave us a, a wonderful insight. I hope you all were able to, uh, to listen to it, but a wonderful in insight into uh, what, what it was like to grow up in uh, an indigenous community and be involved with the recreational, with the recreational, with the residential schools. John, do you want to fill in a bit? I was can just going to say. If, sorry, John, can I ask if there's honorariums. If you, if we were to organize speakers for the community, are there honorariums to um, attract some good speakers? Do we have funds for that, or not really? Yeah. Yes, we have. We have approached it that way. Okay. Um, and uh, Mr. Cucci is an example of that. 
I was just going to say, if, if anyone wants to get a sort of a head start on this, I'd highly recommend the uh, uh, Town of Shelburne's website uh, report uh, on these issues. Um, their committee came up with a number of really, really good ideas. And uh, as we know, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Um, and uh, some of the ideas that they have uh, promoted uh, through their committee process are, are frankly no-brainers in terms of uh, adoption by us. Um, and they go to the heart of uh, how we communicate with the public, um, you know, our sensitivity to various issues. Uh, it takes us beyond uh, what we do now, uh, which is uh, to acknowledge certain uh, months of the year uh, and uh, raising of certain flags. Um, our objective is to go beyond what we're currently doing. Not to say that what we're currently doing uh, is is wrong or or is inadequate. I think it's 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 forceful. But uh, the town of Shelburne, I think, in their website, uh, it, it's a good model to emulate. And uh, just to add to the council members' uh, comments, I think one this this is an advisory committee to council, and I think as such, you uh, and as council does with their other advisory committees, when certain issues come before them that um, you know they need assistance with, they they will designate or sorry delegate uh, to the committee certain issues for comment. Uh, and recommendations back to them. So that will also fill, fulfill some of the uh, agendas that you will see coming forward in the future. Yes, Yo. Um, I just started working with the County of Dufferin this week actually, and um, was just kind of really diving into the county's website. And um, they also have a, um, a diversity, equity, and um, inclusion committee as well. And they um, have an area where they um, recognize and celebrate um, different cultural celebrations, um, which is great. So whether we share what the other municipalities within the county are doing and just being um, really, um, I guess, include being a part of the um, just being inclusive and sharing um, other what other counties or, or municipalities are doing, I think really ties everything together and um, it's not necessarily duplicating, but just being um, spreading the awareness um, of all these different cultural celebrations that are happening in our county um, might be a good jumping point. Um, rather, as well as adding our own flavor to um, things as well. Um, just maybe even having a section on the town's website, uh, kind of similar to what Shelburne and Dufferin is doing, and just really, um, yeah, uh, like having on our on the website, like, hey, this is like, for instance, this month is Asian Heritage Month. Um, Next month is, uh, is Pride, as well as um, um, Indigenous Day um, uh, celebrations over the summer solstice. So yeah, there's lots of um, cultural celebrations that happen throughout the year. Um, like um, I just, just uh, finished the other day as well, and um, just really making that more prominent um on our website our social media channels so that um people are more aware of it because not everyone knows what um these different cultural celebrations and important days are about so just really providing resources and sharing websites and um these kinds of things would be really great and very easy to do right and one of the mandates of the committee is to liaise with with the other committees and and other community members um, for 
for information. So that that definitely works within your mandate. And I'll definitely add, you know, to your first meeting uh, website development uh, onto the agenda. I think that's probably a, a, a good place to start. Um, John, did you have your hand up or were you just relaxing your finger like I do on my face sometimes? I wasn't sure. <laughs> Mayor Krillman, I was talking to you, you were kind of had your finger ready no, to ask. just relaxing. That, okay, thanks. And, and, uh, and really in, uh, appreciating the comments that are being made. Any other questions on the terms of reference? What what, what I'll be suggesting, I'll, I'll, I'll um, speak with Nishan and we'll, we'll put together an agenda. If you have any thoughts for agenda items, if you just want to email me at the office um, for, for, for the next meeting, uh, I can uh, start working with Nishan on, on an agenda for your meeting. Um, if there's no other questions on the terms of reference, I'd like to move on then to, I guess, your responsibilities as committee members. And I'm not I'm not trying to scare you here by any means. Uh, I think if you've talked to most of our committees and committee members, most of our committees are uh, uh, fairly open, relaxed, and uh, you know you can you can say your piece and. Uh, uh, enjoy your meetings. I think most most of the committees uh, work well together, and I think this one will too. Um, I think Fred mailed out to you or sent out to you by email the the uh, standing advisory committee guide and, and the and the uh, I guess expectations for committee members. I think one of the first things is accountability and transparency. Um, our, our meetings are public; they're, they're being recorded. They will be uploaded, as uh, all our committees are. Uh, if we get into a very sensitive um, situation, um, I mean, there is the opportunity to go in camera or, or have a confidential meeting. It's generally, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not prohibited, but we, we do like to keep most of our meetings open and transparent, especially with the committee levels. Um, you're generally only going in in camera when you're dealing with you know legal items or personal issues. I think when when you're at a committee level. Um, other than that, yeah, be aware all all, all of our meetings are public. Um, conflict of interest. Um, there are legislative conflict of interest, and then there's I, I would call it more of a personal conflict of interest. So. Um, Mayor Krillman and Councillor Mangdalo are bound by the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act because they are councillors. Um, there are ramifications for them not declaring a pecuniary interest. For you as committee members, you're not bound by the Conflict of Interest Act, but when you find yourself in a situation where you may be dealing with a neighbor or a friend, uh, a family member, for instance, uh, you may wish to um, declare a conflict and take a step back just so you're not you're not going to be accused of being prejudiced on any on uh, any given issue. So um, that's just of a, a, a rule of thumb for committee members. Again, you're not bound by the Conflict of Interest Act like Mayor Creelman or Councillor Mangtelo are. Um, there is a procedural bylaw. It sets out how council meetings will run. Um, or, or should run. Um, we'll, I don't know if you've been provided that. We'll make sure you all get a copy of the procedural bylaw. We do try to keep our committees as close as possible to, to the procedural bylaw, but um, obviously there's instances where uh, certain sections of the procedural bylaw may not apply to committees. Um, so that's, uh, you know, not a rule of thumb, but uh, uh, certainly a guideline for you. Um, Council members are here. They're they're here for your support. Um, they're here to give you, I guess, additional direction from council. You you are sitting as their advisory committee, and uh, Councillor Mangtaglo and Mayor Creelman are sitting on this committee. Uh, both the liaise uh, back and forth between council and this committee, and uh, also to to uh, uh, participate with you um, in your decision making. Um, staff roles. Um, I'm sitting here as a non-voting member. Um, I'll try to assist whenever I can on, uh, you know, where, where you may be running a foul in something or, or when, when, you've, when you've got a good idea and how to run with it and make any suggestions. 
um, and uh, you know we're, we're we're here to help you and get information you need as required. Um, again, Michelle's here. She's also um, you know more of a recording secretary at this time, um, and I'll, I'll I'll leave it at that. I guess one one I guess point I would make is that. Uh, directions to staff direction to staff from the committee should come via a committee resolution through council staff work for council we're not working and, and i say this in a polite way we're not working for you as committee members but we can certainly uh be leveraged through your your recommendations and comments to council to to have work performed you shouldn't be calling us up, directing us to to do work uh, for you for your committee work in in, in any way. Again, uh, if it's something simple, it's usually something we would deal with very easily through uh, um, just a one on one. If it's going to be a bigger, major project, then you'll you'll hear back from us to say no. Um, bring that to the committee put a recommendation together and, and take it to council in. Uh, council likes to see it in the form of a resolution of advice. There's a form that uh, we fill out or the committee um, secretary will fill out at the end of a night of any recommendations from this committee back to council. Um, uh, remuneration, um, I believe it's $30 a meeting. Um, and uh, should, have, should have said this before the um, appointments of the chairperson. The chairperson receives 65 per meeting, so um, there might have been a bit more, um, less reluctance to decline that position if, uh, <laughs> if you knew that ahead of time. <laughs> uh, other than that, I think uh, you've all signed off on your FIPA, or you should sign off on your FIPA. That's just um, allowing us to at least, um, even within the committee, to exchange emails between the committee members. Uh, we have had a situation in the past where a committee member was upset about their email being even circulated uh, to other committee members. So uh, we do that as of right now is to get everybody just to sign their MFIPA form so that uh, uh, Andrew's not concerned if comments of his are going to Christine or to other members of the committee. So that's a real, it, it's a protection for us, protection for you, and it's something we have run up against already. Uh, in, Where did we find that form? Is that was that sent out to us to sign? It was all sent out to you. Yeah, um, Christine, let let me know if you if you don't have it or haven't. Uh, okay, I'll go through the emails. If it's there, I'll find it. Thank you. Sorry it would have been that. in the very first email from Fred Simpson. Okay, I'll find when, it. When when he advised you that you had been appointed to the committee. So. Okay. Um, other than that, we do have a social media. Uh, policy and I should probably get that out to you as well just so you're aware of um, of what it says it's um, I mean it, it, it deals with our social media um, what we'll reply to what we'll put on our social media through committees and council um, there's certainly an opportunity for us to put uh, committee work that you're doing onto our social media um, it generally states that you as an individual shouldn't be putting out committee business on yours and and uh, uh, getting um, trying to take it over as your own, for lack of a better word. Um, but I can certainly um, give give you the full policy on that as well. So um, that's generally it as committee members. I don't know, Councillor Mankdal or Mayor Krillman, if you think there's any other advice or policies that the committee should be aware of at this time. Oh, I, I could just make a comment, uh, Mark. Um, uh, you've all heard about uh, the, the uh, council, and I think you all know the, the council members. Fred Nix is uh, sitting in here. He's the deputy uh, mayor, and uh, Sharon Martin and uh, Melinda Davies and myself round, rounded out. Um, the uh, You should not think of the council as um, being um, a, a limiting factor to what, what you're doing just because uh it's it's the role the, the route is to, to give the council advice and the council then deals with it whether we have to involve the, the staff or or if we it's a matter of saying go ahead or something like that i, I want you to know that uh, when this um um the idea came up to have this advisory committee that the council was unanimous in, in wanting to have the committee and it has a, a very strong support 
from the council. The other thing I might mention is just the way councils work. Um, every uh, at the end of the um, electoral year, which is um, actually with respect to councils, is probably next February. Uh, the council uh, has to be um, um, recreated, if you like. The practice in the past has been usually that council members, if they don't want to carry on, they don't, but they usually re recreate the same committee with, with some changes so that um, uh, we were interested in getting this committee going now, even though it's May and uh, there's maybe uh, a half year plus left. Uh, because we thought it was a really important committee. And uh, the expectation is that if all of you are enjoying what you're doing, that you'll be continue to be on the committee uh, in the next year. That's my unofficial uh, <laughs> uh, sort of a way of trying to encourage you that um, that you don't need to apply again. And while you don't need, the, the likelihood is you'll continue on the committee. Is that fair enough, John? Yes, absolutely. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Ralph. And, and I further point out that Ralph is being too modest. Uh, he is the driving force behind this initiative. And I'd like to thank him on behalf of council. Uh, he's uh, uh, stepped up to this uh, initiative and uh, has seen it through. And I think we've got a great committee. Great. We're going to do good things. Yeah. And, and the other thing about the committee is that uh, people can be added to committee uh, as committee members. So um, it's obvious that there are some areas that we could add additional people to. But um, um, so if somebody uh, approaches you and they say, I wish I was uh, been appointed to this committee, uh, then bring it up to um, Nishan and uh, it can be discussed. And there's a possibility of being appointed to a committee uh, at any time through the uh, through the uh, the year. Thanks, Ralph. So, looks like we have a really diverse um, committee, and which is great. Very happy to be um, working and getting to know all of you, and really excited to see um, see this forward and growing growing this committee. Thanks. Now, if you thought the election of the chair was hard. Um, I'm going to ask you what dates uh, or nights or days that this committee uh, would like to meet and whether we're going to find um, a, a, a happy date or night that we can meet on. Um, I know second and I guess it's the second Tuesday of the month is already a council meeting. So that's kind of taken. I know Monday nights and Thursday nights are out just from a, uh, a Michelle and our schedules as well. So I don't know if when does Wednesday nights work for people? Is this a good night that we could go with on a monthly basis? I see nodding of heads. That's it'll work for me. Okay. I, uh, I have a bit of a um, on. March 18th, I start my Korean language classes again um, at 7 p.m. So on Wednesdays? I, on Wednesdays, yeah. If, okay. if people are open to maybe starting the meetings a little bit earlier. That's every every Wednesday, then, is it? Uh... Yeah, it's March 18th to, um, I think, the second week in August. Okay. I'm fine doing 5.30, if that's helpful, on Wednesdays. on Wednesdays. Mark, I wonder about a, a, a Tuesday that's not a council meeting day. Tuesdays, oh, I volunteer at the Wildlife Rehabilitation Center from 6 to 11. Um, so Tuesdays do not work for me. Um, will we be meeting at, um, throughout the summer? I, I would. I know some committees do not, but. I think at this time, yes, but certainly up to the committee to change that decision once they get into it. I think by the um, time you get through the summer, um, you're only going to have a few limited days left before the election and the end of the year, right? So. 
I leave that to the committee. If you don't wish to sit, that's you know certainly an option. But um, if we could fall on a common date first, maybe we can kind of take that discussion forward later. Yep. I what, um, my last Korean course, uh, it was recorded, so um, I may be able to miss a Wednesday here and there in my course. If, if it is being recorded, then I can possibly well, um, is it, do the class later at another time. Um, well, before you do that, was there was there any objections to meeting at 530 on the Wednesday? Like if everybody's available, we could we could start with that and, and then uh, if it's not working out, go from there. That's what I'd suggest. If if there's no strong feelings of, of, about it, let's let's meet on on Wednesdays at 530. Work. OK, um, any any given Wednesday you want to go with uh, first, second, third, fourth Wednesday of the month? You pick Mark. <laughs> I'll go with the third only because it's not on the second and fourth. <laughs> I'm not either going to a council meeting or, 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 or coming off a council meeting. So sure, if that works. Can. With... Why don't why don't you um, do you have a preference of third or fourth Wednesday would work for me? Um, I'm fine with the time. <clears throat> So that I'm I'm good with that. Third Wednesday at uh, five thirty. I'd prefer the third Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Okay, by me, right? Okay, third Wednesday. Okay, so third Wednesday will be the eight. Well, and and we'll meet in two weeks. Then is that com is that fine for the committee? No. Okay. Um, I'm not going to create more problems. I have a conflict on the third Wednesday, but I will make sure there's an alternate alternate here. So um, I'm fine, f I think, from then on. But uh, um, just the next one, I do have a, uh, I, I will be out of town. So, um, but I'll make sure that uh, Mike or Fred are here as a replacement. So, okay. So we'll set the um, Third Wednesday at 5.30 for our meeting dates. Perfect. Um, anything else from committee members for this evening? I, I'm just curious if um, these are public uh, on, on our website. Is Does that mean there's no opportunity for ever having in-person meetings? I think it would be great to get to know people a bit better, which is a bit hard to do through video chat all the time. Right, and I said I think as we move through uh, pandemic, Christine, I think we're, we're we're getting close. That's certainly an option for the committee. Um, I think just in the you know in the next month or so, I think we'll probably be virtual. But I think moving on from there, I think it's you know we're kind of waiting to see what's what's happening um, you know throughout right. the community. So it's not mandated that it has to be videoed and has to be posted on the website. We've just we're doing that since the pandemic. We're doing that, yes, with with our committees okay. in the Understood. pandemic, yep. and we're not running hybrid meetings for the committees. It becomes very staff demanding to to yeah. not have the interaction. So once once a committee moves to um, in person meetings, then they'll just be advertised as an in person meeting, and we'll go from there. Understood. Okay. If there's nothing else, I'll call for a motion to adjourn. All quiet. Thanks, Ralph. And seconded by Christine. Motion to adjourn at 8.13. Thank you all very much. And I'll make sure you get a package of additional information on policies. Thank you, everybody. It's nice to meet everybody. Thank you. And Nisha, I'll touch base with you before the next uh, committee meeting. Yes, sir. Thank you, everybody. Nice meeting you all. Great. Thank you all very much. Anything from me, just uh, call me, email me. Uh, I'm available almost all the time. Okay. Nice meeting, Thanks, everybody. Andrew.
All right. Thank see you. you guys. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.